Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today we're taking a look at a multicolor Sphinx reanimator deck. And while the card reanimate is reserved for the timeless format, we do get to now play with Persist, which is the next fastest option. A two mana sorcery returns target non legendary creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter on it. Now we don't really care about power and toughness too much, since we mostly want to leverage some powerful abilities on our Sphinx creatures. Got two copies of Conspiracy Unraveler and the full set of Scholar of the Lost Trove. These are both perfect for casting some very expensive sorceries for free, and those include Breach the Multiverse, which will also help fill the graveyard to enable them, and then Emergent Ultimatum, and finally two copies of Alrin's Epiphany to take an extra turn, so once we put enough creatures on the battlefield, we can immediately attack to win the game. So that's kind of our deck in a nutshell. We also need ways to fill the graveyard initially, so that's where Faith looting can draw to and discard to already potentially set up the win on turn two if we have the right cards to discard and then cast persist on turn two we also have a gaze which can also be flashed back to surveil three to fill the graveyard and then a tagam's scheming can surveil five so we can also go digging for specific cards maybe keep some lands on top if we need those and then a thrilling discovery can discard two and draw three gaining some life in the process and then our reanimation spells besides Persist also include two copies of Unburial Rites, which can also be flashed back, so we don't mind discarding it or milling it, and then we can cast it for four mana as opposed to five. And then Glasspool Mimic is here as potentially a land, but also as something we can search up with our Emergent Ultimatum, and then the Glasspool Mimic can copy Scholar of the Lost Trove, which when it enters can cast a target instant sorcery or artifact card from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, and then afterwards we have to exit sell it. So the plan is usually to discard Scholar alongside one of these expensive spells, and then once we reanimate the Scholar, we can immediately cast those for free. And then we also have a one-off Mizzix Mastery, which can kind of do the same as a 4-mana Unburial Rites, just skipping the creature part, immediately getting back one of these expensive sorceries after discarding them, and then uh, that way we get to cast those for free as well. And then the Unraveler requires us to collect Evidence 10, so we do need some expensive mana values in the graveyard, but then we can start casting spells out of our hand for free, so sometimes we do want to keep an Emergent Ultimatum in hand, for instance, so we can cast it after reanimating the Unraveler instead. And then our big spells here include Epiphany, just to take an extra turn. Don't get any bird tokens, since this card has been nerfed in Historic, so it's a little bit different than the paper version here, unless we foretell it first, but that's not part of our plan. And then we've got Breach the Multiverse, milling each player for 10, and then for each player we can choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's graveyard to put it onto the battlefield under our control. So that can not only bring back a Scholar or Unraveler, but also steal one of the opponent's creatures or planeswalkers. And then by milling 10, we're also making it much easier to keep enabling a card like Unraveler, or filling the graveyard for future copies of Scholar, so we can keep getting back more powerful spells. And then Emergent Ultimatum gets to find three more monocolored cards. The opponent gets to choose one that goes back into our deck, and the other two we can cast for free. So that can find our various creatures, Breach, Epiphany, Unburial Rites is monocolored, so that can reanimate a creature that's already in the graveyard. A one of Mastery can also be a nice one to get, as we can maybe cast another Breach or another Ultimatum, so we can kind of chain those together. And as we mentioned, Glasspool Mimic can also maybe copy a Scholar that's already on the battlefield. And then once we have, let's say, three or four of these Sphinx creatures on the battlefield, and and take an extra turn, we can usually close it out, especially with the extra creatures we get from the opponent. And then the mana base can potentially introduce some additional inconsistency, since we are trying to support four colors. No green, even though we could technically hard cast Emergent Ultimatum with three copies of mana Coflos on the battlefield, but instead we still need blue and red on turn one ideally, and then on turn two we might want red and white for discovery. We also need to have black available for persist, so we do have a pretty demanding mana base, and ideally have as many untapped lands as possible as well. So we've got a full set of mana Confluence, a few fast lands here, to maybe save on some life with Spire Bluff, which makes sense since we want both blue and red on turn one. 
got a few dark slick shores and seacrum coast and then one basic in case we need to search it up and then some more shock lines to round it out with hallowed fountain godless shrine and a blood crypt but again there's a lot of ways to configure the mana base also a lot of ways to configure the main deck since you can kind of pick and choose which expensive spells to include but i think the core of the deck is going to be faithless looting persist scholar and then probably breach the multiverse and then from there you can branch out in a few different directions but i think emergent ultimatum makes sense and then you can kind of round out the deck with more creatures but since legendaries cannot be reanimated with persist going for unraveler i think makes a lot of sense as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play facing a deck with lurus as companion our hand is Missing a couple pieces. Could scheming on two if we play tap mimic, or we could looting on one. Look for white mana, look for some creatures maybe to reanimate. I think I try to mulligan. And this seems better. Still need a reanimation effect, but at least now we have both scholar and breach. And then do we get rid of the thrilling discovery so we can looting on one? It is card disadvantage, both looting and scheming. And we do need to keep hitting our land drops. But if I find a persist, I may only need two lands. So sure. And there's a persist, perfect. So turn two, we can already combo off here. That's the power of this reanimator deck. Opponent is indeed on energy. And turn to breach the multiverse. Hope to hit another creature. Looks like we did. And amped raptor from the opponents. We want probably just another scholar, but let's take a look at the graveyard. Yeah, we can hit another breach, of course, so that will be quite nice. And then on the opponent's side, at this point. I don't think Amped Raptor does too much for me, so make a Guide of Souls. And then get another Breach. Could also persist back something, but Breach can find something on the opponent's side as well, like an Ajani. On our side, looking at another Scholar. Mimic can also copy Scholar. And then we'll have another Breach to get back. So, lots of nice options. And then, mother. I guess Emergent Ultimatum is going to be better than Breach. And then we can go for Epiphany. Scholar. Mimic can copy Scholar. Or we can go for Unburial Rites, which accomplishes more or less the same. So they're not going to want to give us Alron's Epiphany most likely, which means we'll just keep going until we mill it. But yeah, opponent gave us the Epiphany. Does get exiled, so I can't get it back with Scholar, but we have enough power and toughness in play already to close out the game pretty much. And then what's left could go for another Emergent Ultimatum. Just need to make sure I don't deck myself, but yeah, we'll just breach here. And then get another Guide of Souls. And Unraveler could also mimic Copy Scholar. So can kind of see all the combos here. And in the meantime we have enough energy that we can uh, also start growing our creatures. And then a Milled Epiphany to take two extra turns. Attack. And we'll spend some energy. And that should do it. Well, took a few game actions here to actually win the game, but we essentially won on turn two, thanks to that persist. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We have persist, but no creature to really go with it. 
If I find red mana, Discovery can discard Breach and then Mastery on turn 4 can cast Breach. But uh, yeah, I do need to find red mana for that to work. So this one's got potential, but uh, it could just be a disaster if we don't find the red mana or some other way to put a creature in the graveyard for Persist. I think I still tried though. And then I don't want to play Mimic if I want a Discovery on turn 2. Opponent on a life gain deck, looting another card we cannot cast. So, could have gone for a tapped Godless Shrine, I suppose, but we do have some tap lands. So, next turn I can go for Mimic, as Amalia is gonna start growing. And Ajani is up next. Alright, found the rat, perfect. So now we can Discovery, discard Breach, and either Mimic or Looting. Can still flash back Looting next turn, although I can cast Looting and Persist in the same turn, which has a lot of value. Alright, more Breaches, but no creature. So I get another attempt next turn with Looting. Opponent's doing life gain things here. And yeah, they've got a reasonably fast clock. But no real interaction for the combo, which is what matters. Alright, we're at 12, so yeah, next turn... We are facing lethal, so... I have to be able to discard a creature here and then persist to reanimate. So, yeah, no time like the presence. And we found the Unraveler, awesome. Got a pretty stacked hand, so should be able to make it work. Discard some expensive spells to enable the uh, Collect Evidence. And then what do we want to start with? Maybe Breach makes more sense just to fill the graveyard some more. And then Breach, Discovery, Looting can go. And then on the opponent's side, don't want to go for Thalia. That could have been pretty useful interaction. You can pick the Pilgrim, I guess. And then Scholar. Scholar gets back. Could go for Epiphany, could go for another Breach. And then we still have Emergent Ultimatum left. Now we can go for a Guide of Souls. And another Scholar. Gain some life. Go for Epiphany now, take an extra turn. And then I can still Ultimatum. And we can mastery back an extra spell as well. Scholar writes, and yeah, our opponent sees the writing on the wall, can make a couple more flyers, get our extra turn, attack, and win the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got the persist, scholar, breach. We're just missing a discard outlet. So if we don't find looting or thrilling discovery, this hand doesn't do a whole lot. I think I still try it. Could also try and discard to hand size, but that trick works a lot better if you're on the draw as opposed to the play. So we'll just play this tapped and pass. Now I guess by playing the Mimic I wouldn't be able to play a Thrilling Discovery on turn 2 if I draw it. But uh, just pass it back, opponent on maybe the Gates deck. So you could maybe see Primeval Titan searching up Maze's end. And there's a Thrilling Discovery, perfect. Discard Scholar and Breach, and then next turn we can combo off. Could have also maybe waited so we don't show them what we're up to, and then Discovery and um, use Persist in the same turn. But don't expect too much interaction from their deck. 
And uh, sure, let's persist. Cast a free breach, maybe hitting their primeval titan. And that's good enough for a concession. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck, so it could be another energy deck. Our hand seems fine for now, don't have a reanimation effect yet, but should be able to find one soon enough. And then turn to Spire Bluff, Discovery, discard Scholar, plus maybe a Glass Pool Mimic. Can discard double Scholar, or I can hold one in case we need to hard cast it, but hopefully that's not going to happen. Unraveler in hand. So yeah, just missing a reanimation effect now. Persist or Unburial Rites. Opponent on the red-white energy deck with Amped Raptor. And what did they find? Static Prison without a target. So probably best to leave that in exile. And we're gonna keep stringing together more spells. Probably don't need to discard the Unraveler since we already have Double Scholar in the graveyard. And then I uh, can discard one of my shock lands, perhaps. Play a tap mimic. Yeah, still uh, waiting for our reanimation spell. It's gonna be a Johnny next. With the red permanent in play, and now static prison. I guess uh, just to gain some energy. Although it only gives them energy if they actually exile something with it and persist to draw, perfect. So bring back Scholar, cast a free Emergent Ultimatum. Could have also gone for Persist, bring back another Scholar. But uh, now we go for Breach. Uh, maybe Conspiracy on Raveler and Alron's Epiphany. That seems fine. Could also go for Unburial Rites, which can then get back the Author's Scholar. So yeah, either way, got some nice options. Don't get Unraveler, but we can Breach and get back our uh, Scholar. And the opponent's graveyard finds maybe... I guess we won't be gaining life for the Ocelot Pride. So let's make it Guide of Souls then, or Soul Warden, I guess triggers of their stuff as well. And all right, our opponent has seen enough. Can chain together enough nonsense here to win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kahira. Could be Control. Our hands lacking blue mana. Can looting, discard Epiphany and Breach. But we're not really doing much else. This hand, I guess I'll try. And then I could already looting, discard, scholar, and breach. Opponents might be on a Charbelcher deck here. Okay, so they're not gonna have a ton of interaction, but it's gonna be a race to whoever can combo first. And I guess we'll maybe be able to combo on turn two if we find persist. Now. I guess the plan is turn 3 flashback looting, turn 4 unburial rides, the scholar. But I still discard breach here in case we top deck our uh, persist. Alright, never mind, opponent's an energy deck. So they might be on uh, the version we played recently with Dynavolt Tower. So they do have a counter spell, which we'll have to potentially play around. But for now. I think just play Tapped Mimic. And then next turn, Flashback Looting. Discarding on Burial Rites is an option to then flash it back on turn 4. If we're afraid of a counter spell, maybe we wait until casting it on 5 mana. And yeah, there we see Dynavolt Tower. So, for now, Flashback Looting, see what we find. A bunch of lanes. Alright, so if our opponent keeps up a counter spell next turn and they counter my Unburial Rites, I don't have anything going on. Our opponent isn't really pressuring us too much, so I think I hold the Unburial Rites to cast it for 5 and then flash back on 4, even though that's not quite as speedy as uh, 
just discarding it now. But I'm afraid I'm going to be out of spells to cast otherwise. And then if they feel inclined to keep up a counter spell, they're not progressing their own game plan as much. It's going to be another amulet. And hit us for two. And our opponent is keeping up two mana here. Alright, so I feel a bit vindicated now. So we can Thrilling Discovery, and then maybe get this countered. Otherwise Breach can go, and a land can make it a tap land. And then Emergent Ultimatum isn't happening anytime soon. But yeah, next turn we can Unburial Rites, maybe get it countered, and then turn after, try and flash it back. Opponent going for Ether Hub instead of playing the Generatorium first, so they did miss out on one energy here. And yeah, if they want to counter Unburial Rites, now they'll be forced to spend their energy. But I imagine we'll see a counter here. And yeah, up to six, thanks to Dynavolt Tower. So if they have a second Ether Spike, we could be dead. Finds Galvanic Discharge. Can also take out our uh, Scholar of the Lost Trove after we bring it back. But it should still generate enough value that we can take over. Kahira in hand. And yeah, let's see if uh, this Unburial Rites works out. Tune the narrative to draw. And then maybe an Aether Spike afterwards. Yep. Alright, so now between Dynavolt Tower, the attack, we're almost dead. And we don't have anything exciting planned for next turn. So we got a, a little bit unlucky to run into double counter spell here. Although to be fair, if they had fewer counter spells, they would have had more pressure. And if they have an Aether Revolt here, we're very easily dead. It's gonna be another Raptor. Can also trigger the unstable amulet. And a reiterating bolt is not getting cast at least. A Rush of Inspiration. Trigger Amulets. Tower puts us to 5. Raptor puts us to 3. And our opponent found a third Aether Spike. So yeah, they definitely have it covered now. Generatorium can draw. And Unburial Rites almost would have been good enough if we could cast and flash back in the same turn. But that's not the case here. Alright, so getting to see the energy control deck we featured recently. And yeah, it looks good when you draw the counter spell against combo. GG's. Tower down to one. And in response here, I want to tap my mana confluence. If it gives me priority. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Got a lot of ways to fill the graveyard. And barrel rides can maybe be flashed back. Yeah, I think this is acceptable, even if it's not the most explosive hand possible. And then I can play tap Mimic, although probably better to just cast Gaze. And then turn two, we could Tygam's Scheming. Opponent on red-white energy. They're not playing Lurus, which means they're probably playing Flage as a powerful three drop. Fight beside me, brother. 
And yeah, happy to put these in the graveyard. Do I need to draw land? Not particularly. So now we're just waiting for our uh, persist pretty much. So I could flash back gaze, or we could scheming, keep persist on top. And I don't think our opponent can really mess with that unless they make me shuffle somehow. And there's persist. And in case something goes wrong, do I want thrilling discovery afterwards? Sure. Opponent passes with two mana. They could have the reprieve counter spell, I suppose, but then persist goes back to hand. That works. Go for breach. And let's see what we hit. There's always a fail rate here if we don't find one of our creatures. So we can go for Scholar, and then on the opponent's side, there we see Flage as we suspected. So Scholar, and then, I mean, I guess Flage would be okay. Could also go for Guide of Souls, which can gain us more life. And then Scholar gets Emergent Ultimatum. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, this hand could work. Can discard Scholar and Breach, discard Unburial Rites to flash back on turn 4. Opponent with turn 1 Giver. Might be some sort of Aura deck trying to protect a key threat. Which, yeah, could present a fast clock, as we don't really have any interaction. It's gonna be Sorin next. Okay, so stick to the plan. Discard Scholar, and now we can go for Emergent Ultimatum. Although, most likely, just gonna discard Unburial Rites and Breach next turn. And then, turn 4, we can combo off. Hope to dodge Graveyard Hate. Opponent hits for 2. And Obnixilis is next. Fair enough. Opponent making us discard is not necessarily a bad thing for us, since we actively want Unburial Rites in the graveyard. And then Unraveler I could also discard, but I also don't mind keeping as kind of a leftover in hand. So, got a few options here. But maybe start by discarding Breach. And find Epiphany. So, tempted to not show them the Unburial Rites, just discard maybe Unraveler Epiphany. And then if our opponent pluses up Nixilis, which is pretty likely, then next turn I can discard Unburial Rites and flash back. Although I might be getting too fancy here. Alright, and then we can keep up Gaze in case something goes wrong. But I may not even need it. We're still at 22. And Guide of Souls is fine. So, they appear to be on kind of a Mardu mid-range deck with some life gain synergy. Ajani makes a lot of sense. Obnixil is also a way to sacrifice the cats to enable it. So I can see the appeal. And this card and burial rights, opponent stamped out, so they shouldn't really have a way to interact here. And at this point we can discard a land. Sorin's also going to transform, so yeah, opponent does have a lot of stuff in play. But uh, yeah, assuming we can bring back a few creatures here, we should be fine. And then I may as well cast our instant, put more stuff in the graveyard. And Unburial Rites, Scholar, and get back Emergent Ultimatum for starters, which can go for Scholar, Epiphany, and Breach, that looks okay. 
I guess I want to get Mastery over Epiphany right now. Because, yeah, I guess I don't have another Scholar in the graveyard at the moment. Whereas Mastery can get back our uh, Breach as well. Could also get um, our Clone Effect for Scholar. So we have a few options here. But I don't think it's going to matter too much either way. So we get Mastery on Breach. Could also Mastery on Emergent Ultimatum. And then cast Breach. And go for Scholar. And on their side, Titan of Fire's Fury looks good. Take care of. Probably just gonna go face here. Since I'm gonna end up taking an extra turn to close out the game anyways, so... That might speed things up a little bit. And then we're already casting Emergent Ultimatum, but let's take an extra turn as well. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. We can keep copying Scholar with our clone, get more Scholars, and eventually get a lethal army of Flyers. Awesome! Alright, so we got to see our Sphinx Reanimator combo in action. And yeah, the deck can win as early as turn 2, which is faster than most decks in the format. It does have a fail rate, of course, there's a bit of inconsistency. Having four callers in the mana base can also trip us up. And then if we're playing this in best of three especially, can expect to see some graveyard hate to slow us down. Taxation effects like Thalia can also be pretty effective. So there's certainly answers out there, but as far as the best of one meta is concerned, I think this is a pretty decent choice, especially with the Boros life gain decks being so popular, they don't really have any useful interaction for the matchup. So then as long as we have a functional draw, we should be able to win those. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.